Hello and welcome. In today's video, we will be testing the new version of Yuzu MMJR. For those who don't know, after Yuzu was banned from Discord, an alpha version called Yuzu MMJR began development and can now be tested. The initial versions generated some controversy, and as posted on Discord, they should be tested at the user's own risk. I tested it and can already tell you that this version brought good results in some games, but it also presented some problems. Did it perform better than the last test done with Yuzui? That's what you'll see in this video. First, let's talk about the problems I noticed. This version is totally experimental, and the one tested in this video was Yuzui MMJR5 Revision 2. Since I got my cooler to record on my Android, I haven't had any emulator or game exceed 38 degrees on the device. However, this time, playing a game that isn't considered very heavy like Kirby in the Forgotten Lands, the device reached almost 45 degrees at one point and I preferred to stop the tests. As I was using an enter to version, there wouldn't be thermal throttling, but it could damage my device. It seems that this was fixed in revision 3, as the warning of use at your own risk was removed. Another problem I noticed was excessive battery consumption. Even with the device connected to the ROG Phone 65W charger, the battery was drained after a certain amount of gameplay. I had never experienced this problem before. The cooler I was using was connected to another charger, and not the same as the ROG phone. Keep in mind that the ROG phone has two 3000 mAh batteries, totaling 6000 mAh, and I was using the charging preset to bypass the batteries and only use the power directly from the wall to power the system. Even so, the 65 watts were not enough. Perhaps the extremely high temperature of the device was causing the battery drain. As an advantage of this version, I was able to run games at higher resolutions and with better FPS. Zelda Breath of the Wild ran for the first time in native Full HD. Red Dead Redemption, which previously ran at 50% resolution, went up to 75%. Astral Chain, which was unplayable even at low resolutions, started running at 1080p with the Qualcomm driver, although there are still small artifacts in the game's fog. Before we move on to the tests, please like the video. If, in the middle of the video, you find the content irrelevant, you can change to dislike. And if this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing for new content every week. The setup used for recording was the ROG Phone 6 with 8GB of RAM. All gameplay was captured with an external capture card, so there will be no loss related to capture software. At no point will the gameplay have any video editing to speed up or slow down the footage. All tests aim to run the games at the highest quality and resolution possible. I will mention any additional settings for each game as I analyze them individually. The list of games was chosen based on the most challenging titles to run smoothly. Starting with Astral Chain, this game had an incredible improvement, now offering gameplay in 1080p. For this, it was necessary to use a Qualcomm driver. Although there are small vertex breaks in the fog effects, this hardly compromises the gameplay. It was an excellent game. In this specific game, there was no excessive heating of the device, maintaining a stable temperature even with more than 5 minutes of gameplay. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which ran without problems in the last version of Yuzui, crashed before the first minute of gameplay using a driver optimized by Phoenix. However, using the original turnip drivers, there were no emulator crashes or 100% GPU usage, as happened previously. In two complete battles, which take about 5 minutes each, the device's heating was acceptable. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot has always been a very challenging game to run on emulation projects for Android. I saw on the project's discord that several people were able to run it, so I decided to test it. My experience was reasonably good. Although there are lighting issues and some objects may occasionally lose their texture, the game suffers very little from stutters or other serious problems. I read that it is possible to fix these issues by testing various V-Sync modes and drivers. For those who want to venture into this game, I've given all the tips. Fire Emblem games always present problems, whether on emulators for Windows or Android. I decided to test Fire Emblem Engage, and the results were very good, no stutters during battles and maintaining a resolution of 1080p, without the device reaching 100% GPU usage. This is a significant advance for the series in terms of emulation, showing that Yuzui MMJR is overcoming some of the most common barriers. Testing Kirby and the Forgotten Land was quite surprising. Using a cooler, as you can see in the image, the device usually stays very cool, especially with the glass back reaching about 6 degrees Celsius at idle. However, when starting this gameplay, the device was already at 38 degrees Celsius, which is common. 
Usually, the temperature remains stable from that point, but not this time. With Yuzu using the Antutu instruction technique to release more power, the device continued to heat up until it reached about 45 degrees Celsius. I didn't notice this while recording, as the device was on a stand. At the end of the recording, it was so hot it was difficult to hold. I had to let it cool down before continuing the capture of this video. Regarding Kirby's gameplay, the recording lasted about 10 minutes, enough time to go through an entire stage, without noticing graphical issues or performance drops, and without thermal throttling due to the Antutu instruction. It seems that this problem has been fixed in the new versions, as I haven't seen any more announcements about precautions. Here's my advice. Be careful with apps that use the Antutu instruction, as they can cause serious damage if the temperature is not monitored correctly. Metroid Prime Remastered is a challenging game for emulation due to its frequent loadings when changing rooms, which can make the emulation process slow. However, here the game runs very well, without heating or graphic issues. The problems with Mario Kart 8 are still not fixed. The emulator continues to freeze frequently, and switching drivers, disabling Fastmum, and several other changes in the emulator didn't solve the problem. I talked on Discord with someone who has the same issue, so I believe it's a project instruction issue, not my device. To play this game decently, I recommend using the latest update of Yuzu, which runs this game better than any current project. I tested One Piece Odyssey for the first time, as there are usually problems with open world games, and to my surprise, everything behaved normally. My device was able to run the game at 30 FPS without any graphical or performance issues, and the device's temperature remained stable. This is an excellent sign that Yuzi MMJR is well optimized for large-scale games. There were significant improvements in running Red Dead Redemption. I was able to increase the resolution from 50% to 75% with the TV mode enabled. Although it's still not the ideal experience, with several objects disappearing from the screen and FPS dropping drastically to 20, the colors are rendered correctly. Someone might want to play under these conditions, but in my opinion, it will still take some time for this game to become truly playable on Android. Tests for Super Mario Odyssey yielded even better results. I managed to double the resolution, going from 50% to 100%, while still maintaining an acceptable FPS in the Metro Kingdom. All visual effects were present, and there were no drastic FPS drops or major graphical issues, although there is still a problem with the lighting of objects seen from afar. Since only part of the game takes place in the Metro Kingdom, I decided to test in the Cascade Kingdom as well. Here, we have almost stable 60 FPS, and depending on what is on the screen, the FPS may drop to around 50, but overall, the game is in a very good state. The temperature remains stable for over 15 minutes of gameplay. I tested Zelda Breath of the Wild, starting from the city to see if the FPS would drop significantly, considering that cities still run at low FPS even on the original Switch hardware. Using a resolution of 1080p, previously tested at 75%, we managed to stay above 25 FPS in full HD. Playing Switch games in full HD on a phone is an incredible feat. In open areas, we have a solid performance of 30 FPS, even with rain, which demands more GPU and CPU processing. Only during battles did we experience a small drop in FPS, likely due to shader compilation. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom also showed significant improvement. I managed to increase the resolution from 50% to 75%, and there was even a slight performance gain. However, I noticed some small graphical issues with the lighting of foliage, with a strange bloom that only appeared in this new version. This might be a problem with the driver developed directly by Phoenix, or something specific to this version. Overall, the experience was better, with a performance gain and no issues rendering the game's lakes. If you want to see how the previous version of Yuzi compares to Sadachi, I will leave a video in the card in the description so you can compare the gains between the projects. In my opinion, this version has great potential to improve even further, and I am sure you will hear me talk about this project again soon. However, users should be cautious with the Antutu versions, or they might have scary experiences like mine, where the device reached 45 degrees. Overall, if you are going to use the device for long gaming sessions, it is better to use a version without Antutu. Use it only in case of benchmarking or specific game issues. It is essential to use external coolers and check if your cooler is not obstructed when placing the device on a table. I did not notice any performance gains with the drivers developed by Phoenix compared to the normal turnip driver, perhaps it is not as optimized for my device. 
And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.